this day and this opportunity. Lord, I pray that you would fill me with your spirit so that I may teach your word. Always, Lord, I ask that you would guide me and always lead me. Keep me in your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good evening. How is everyone doing? I pray that all is well with you and yours. For my house, all is well. All is well. In fact, I am the most blessed person that I know. Think about that for a second. If you cannot say that about your own life, then you need to look a little deeper. Over the past few weeks, it all has been going on. One thing I've been doing is doing a lot of inventories, looking at my life and looking at all what God has done. There's never been a time in my life where I haven't been blessed. There's never been a time in my life where God has not kept me, even in the midst of trouble. And I just know that he's going to do that right now. No, I know that he is doing that right now. In my reflection moments, I thought about my father and one of his favorite scriptures was Psalms 34. And if you don't mind, let's look at that this evening because that really accentuates knowing that you are a blessed person. In spite of all the trouble we see, in spite of the pandemic, I know everyone is getting tired of staying at home, but in spite of all of the challenges, you are still blessed. David says in that 34th number of Psalm, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mind. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Let's stop right there. First of all, David is making a personal testimony of knowing that God has been blessing him over all what he's been going through. If we looked at the life of David, we know that David had a lot of trouble early on. His father-in-law, Saul, sought to kill him, actually had him dead to right many a times, but somehow God kept him. You and I have to understand that there are going to be times in our lives where the wheels will come off the bus. You will have difficulties, but knowing that everything that happens, God is right there in the midst. When David says, I will bless the Lord, he's saying, in spite of what everyone else does, I'm going to praise the Lord. Sometimes we get to that point where we want to be in certain groups, and if this group doesn't do it, then I'm kind of hesitant. I'm like David today. I will bless the Lord at all times. Wherever I go, outside of the walls of this church, God goes with me. I am not a politically correct person because when I go to school, guess what? St. Rex goes to school with me. When I go every place on this earth, a piece of St. Rex goes with me. And this is what we have to make sure that we do. Knowing that God sees all and he's with us every time. And knowing that if he blesses me here, he can bless me wherever I am. 
years ago I went to Japan only to find myself doing the same thing and saying almost the same words that David is saying today. As I sat on the top of the mountain looking at the horizon and thanking God for all what he's done. Knowing how God had taken a little boy from Mortown and brought him all the way to the other side of the world and let him go up a mountain just to see how blessed I was. And knowing that if God could have taken that boy from Mortown to the other side of the world, Oh, I did not tell you, without any cost, God can do anything. David realized it after all those years tending sheep. And knowing that God kept him in the midst of fighting lions and wolves and predators. And now after King Saul sought to kill him after all those years. David realized too, I am a blessed person. What David wants us to first be able to say is that we have a relationship with God. So many of us, we join churches and we don't get to know Jesus. When you join a church, it's like joining an organization. But it's when you develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that's when everything changes. Because you stop thinking about all the organizations and you start thinking about that relationship. Jesus wants to come in and suffer. with us. Jesus wants us to have time together where we commune and talk. And that's done through our prayer line. After David realized how blessed he is, he doesn't want to monopolize it. He doesn't want to take all of God's blessings for himself. Last week, uh, I was talking to my brother on, on the phone and I told him that I am the most blessed person I know. And everybody else around me is blessed because of me. And he started laughing and I told him, I said, I've been blessing you all of your life. All of my life, I've been blessing my brother. I told him that even when I was a little boy, God blessed me to win a trip for the family to go to Astro World. And I told him, Derek, you did not go there because of you. You got to go because of me. And that shows you that my blessings don't just bless me, but they bless everyone around. And that's what David wanted all of us to realize. That our blessings are what we should take out and share with others. He says, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then he asks them or invites them to join in with him. I understand that it's politically incorrect to talk about religion at work. I understand that some people have hangers if you talk about God. 
and mainly because so many people try to force their God on you. They try to make you think what they think. David here is inviting me. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. What David is doing here, he's not forcing it. He's saying, however you want to magnify the Lord. I'm not going to tell you how to, but <coughs> excuse me, but make sure you lift up the Lord. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord. If I would ask you uh, give you an opportunity to magnify the Lord, all of us wouldn't do it the same way. Mainly because all of us have different gifts. If you would ask me to get on a piano or organ and magnify the Lord, you might not like the sound of my magnification because I can't play the piano nor the organ. However, if you ask me to sing a song, I can magnify the Lord that way. How whatever gifts we have, that's how God wants us to magnify it. We can all do it the same way, but we all can do it our own way. David wanted us to realize that we have to find our own way and how we lift up the Lord. However we do, it's still unto him. So many times people, we get bent out of shape because my gift isn't highlighted. Right now, all around the world, all around this country, some people who just weeks ago, we would walk by and wouldn't even think about it. We would see them in passing and they didn't even register on our minds because we thought they were insignificant. They were beneath me. But now God is showing us all of those people in a different light. Every time now you see someone stocking the shelves at Walmart, I don't know about you, but I'm thanking God. Every time we see someone doing a service, in spite of all of what we're going through, it makes me thank God. Whenever we see those who are going about their days, even in spite of the dangers that are out there, it makes you thank the Lord. We have to understand that however we lift up Him, that's how God wants to do. David realized that by tending sheep. He said to himself, the one thing that I can do, I can continually lift up the Lord even though I might not have the most glamorous job. But look at how much he learned tending sheep. God is able even today to take us from out in the fields and bring us to great heights and feats that we never thought imagined. I know because God has blessed me. God, God has blessed me even in spite of all of my failures. Even in spite of all what I thought I wanted to do. 
God still blessed me. And that's why when he says, I will bless the Lord at all times, I say that in my spirit, amen, every time. As he continues, he wants us to realize that not only is he blessed, he wants us to know that he's favored by God. He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. He said, I actually looked for God, and I found him. And he heard me, and then he delivered me. In this building right now, I remember a young man in this church first Sunday of February 1977. Boy, right back there, pray to pray. Lord, if you let me go to college on a football scholarship, I serve you all the days of my life. But God, give me a sign that this will happen. Never forget going home, I thought about it and I said, Prayed again and said, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't need a sign, but I'll serve you all the days of my life. Two days later, and you can go back and look at the records. Two days later, something happened here in Shreveport that has had never happened before, nor has it happened since. And that was the greatest disparity of temperatures in the city of Shreveport. That morning, it was raining by the time we woke up. About seven o'clock when my brother and I was catching the bus. It started sleeting, and we thought that, hey, we might get out of school early. By the time we got to school, it started sleeting harder. Midway through the first period, it started snowing. So much so that it covered the ground. By 10.30, it had stopped snowing. And a good three inches of snow was on the ground. By 11.30, the sun came out. And all of a sudden, you know how our kids are playing around all day, did not pay attention to all what's going on. The sun came out, and by 2 o'clock, when we started getting ready to Board the bus, I started taking my jacket off and putting the jacket over my arm. Because it had gotten hot. And now it was about 72, 73 degrees. Still climbing as I'm going home. I get off the bus and when my feet touch the grass at my mom's house, this voice told me, how was that for a sign? And that young man went in that house and cried. 
because God had shown me at that point what he was going to do. And that was the beginning of a relationship that flourishes to this day. I'm like David, I can easily say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mind. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify him with me. Let us lift up his name together. Because as David realized, when we lift up God, God will take care of. This is why during this time, if you had not been dedicating some time to Christ, do so now. Even if it's just five minutes, that's five minutes that you didn't do yesterday. I want you to know that God will accept all what you give. But he just wanted to come from your heart. Later you see in this number in Psalms, David says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Meaning, try it for yourself and you will see that God is good. You can listen to me and I can go on and on and on. But if you never try it for yourself, you'll never know the wondrous blessings of trusting me. That's why one day on a hill called Calvary, Jesus died for all of our sins. He did it so that you and I, in spite of all of our problems, in spite of all of our hangups, so that we could have a relationship with the Almighty God. Not just that he died, but he got up. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And all he wants us to do is lift him up. Tell others about his goodness. Tell others of all what he has done in us. Whenever anyone starts talking about being blessed, My friends know and I usually tell them, don't start a conversation if you're not going to listen to a conversation. Don't just expect me to listen to all what God has done for you. And then I can't tell you what he's done for me. He's brought me through a lot of trouble. He's kept me in the midst of all danger. And even though I might sit on the edge of a volcano that's ready to erupt, I know I'm still in God's hand. And even though I might be in the midst of a pandemic, I know that same God has me in his hand. May God bless you and may God keep you not just this day, but every day. And remember, just like David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Let us be happy, knowing that our God is keeping us all.
May God bless you and keep you. God bless you.